Today, we're gonna to be checking out how to make a crazy laser bass sort of a dubstep sound using Spire. So you get the idea. I just wanted to put some drums in there, give it a little more context. It was a pretty quick uh, sound to make, really, really fun sorts of sounds. Now this is one you could make a whole drop out of, but I feel like this is one that also would work really well. It's just like a single moment sort of a stab in a track. Uh, but let me really quick show you something that I thought also is really cool is how touchy the envelopes are, like in a good way, they're super responsive. So for example, here's just the first little bit and it sounds like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the exponential and I think this uh, is a power series or whatever, whatever. It's a different equation, okay? And it's all, that's all we've changed. That is so cool. If we change it again, we get a linear thing. It's kind of mind blowing to me just how amazingly changeable it is with just the click of a button on on just something like an envelope now this makes a lot of sense because this controls how things are moving but i just wanted to sort of show you that so let's go ahead let's dive into how do you make something like this so first let's grab our own new spire we're going to hit init and i'm using the dark theme by the way i'm the legacy theme's cool but i definitely am more of a dark theme kind of guy so the sounds built on two oscillators moving around with some interesting things going on so the first oscillator if you click in here they have a am sync oscillator so i'm using that one and this control a and b do a couple cool things so if we play it right now that's what we have if i move control a why am i playing so high too i play some more we can sort of choose how squarish it is i believe i settled for something closer to a square and control B controls a kind of a, a sync kind of a, a setting. So pretty cool. Obviously, that's the one we're going to want to move. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the envelope and I am using envelope one, which does control the volume of all the oscillators, just so you know. And we're going to take this and I'm going to set it up to control this control here. So we've got two things we can hook it up to. I'm gonna click up here, go to oscillator one, and I wanna control oscillator one, control B. Now it's been set up, but I need to give it some power. So I say, here you go. Now this will move this. Now let's go ahead and dial this down because this is gonna push it up. And let's dial this back as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to also beef up the attack because it's just super fast. And we get that sort of a sound. So cool. We've got our first bass sound. This is the general texture that we want. The next thing we're going to set up is we're going to set up another oscillator. Now it's off right now. So we're going to turn that on. And we're going to go over and pick the vowel one, the vowel setting. And in vowel, let's turn the other one off so we can just hear it. This control A is all the formancy bits of the filter or the oscillator. Sounds like you're saying, oh yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you go backwards. And you can see all the little peaks moving around. That's uh, why valve filters are so cool. And the control B controls where this happens. So it's like a shift. Yeah, so let's go ahead and this you're going to want to set in the range of whatever you're going to be writing the notes in and on control A, I'm going to take this and I'm going to hook it up also. So I'm going to go to oscillator two since this is on oscillator two, I'm going to go to control A and just give it a little bit of power and let's turn back on our oscillator one. And now this is where you would dial it in. There's a lot of options and it's going to vary as you go and you're going to discover stuff you like more than 
in certain situations. So this is not one that I have like an exact recommendation for. Screw around and see what you like. Now, I wanna just uh, beef it up a bit. So I'm gonna go over to the shaper over here and I'm gonna pick tube three. This is that we're at a part in the sound design where I typically wanna hear what it'll sound like if I push it more. And I'm just gonna bring the drive up some. And oh, and we're not hearing it because the dry wet's not on. So let's dial this up to a little bit past half. And that is pretty nice. We also have a wide setting here that I find pretty handy to sort of mess with and just try it out. So I'm gonna leave that up about halfway. And let's go ahead and look at our filter here for a second. Now, we have an envelope for the filter. I'm not really gonna touch it though. I just wanna experiment. And after trying out a bunch of things, I settled on the Perfecto filter. It's quite high, it's not doing that much, but I just wanted a resonance patch. Something like that. Now, I'm going to adjust my filter a bit because I already know I want sort of a, a yip sort of a sound, a woo kind of a thing. So I'm going to take the sustain down and bring the decay up just a smidge. I think I even have it off on the other one. And now we need to talk about this envelope because it's a little strange. You don't see envelopes with these sorts of names uh, in other synths, at least not the ones that um that I use or I have, have learned anyways. Maybe it's a really common thing in a bunch of other synths. But normally you have your attack and then your attack goes to a decay stage, settles on the release, I mean the sustain. You hold the sustain until you let go. But this one's a multi-stage and on their additional stages, they've got just a couple interesting names. So you have your attack, decay, sustain. It's not really a sustain though. Their actual sustain is this guy over here, which um, I forget the technical name for it. If you look it up in the manual, you can find it. And so the way we've done it here is we've said ignore the sustain phase. So we go attack and then this is a timing phase to go directly to the sustain phase. So this controls how long it takes to get to this guy. And then we have a release phase like normal. So that's what these guys are. And you can get some pretty interesting results from messing with these. So first, this is the level control. So this is just how, how loud. And then this moves it around. So you've got that option in here. Really, really handy if you want things to go down and come back up. So now we can get uh, our sustain level in there and we can move this around to sort of change the vibe of it. And now what I wanna do is we need, in order to really take advantage of this, we need to sort of have our MIDI written out so we can experiment. What I mean by that is over here, I like to have a sketch. So I'm just going to copy this, go to a new pattern. And which one am I working on here? This one. And I'm just going to paste it in there. Now I used triplets and they're playing a D sharp two. And they're pretty low. This is again, depending on how you put the shift settings where you settle things, which is why mine's a bit higher. And let's bring these other up. So you can see we are beginning to get to that higher stuff, which is why I probably had the notes lower. So you begin to get options as you go through here. Now, this is one thing with the synth. I spent a while sort of dialing this in, fiddling with things. So I'm gonna sort of skip some of that and just go straight to um, some additional things that I had on. Um, I turned on some of the compression and I left the boost and the warm on. I didn't bother with soft. But yeah, you get a, this is a way tighter sound than my other one too. Yeah, but you get a much more like compressed sound, which I really like. I mean, makes sense. We're just turning a compressor on basically. I also turned on the EQ and gave it a boost and the high end, whoops, I didn't want that. The high end, so give it a little high shelf. You don't need much. Um, and that is, for the most part, the things I had on. All right, another thing you can do that I didn't do in this case is you can actually bring the voicing up and you can bring the detune up. 
This will add things to sort of cause the phasiness, so just give you a bigger sort of a sound. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna dial in the envelope a bit more. I do wanna take advantage of things while they are sustaining. So I am going to bring the sustain up. I'm going to keep the decay down because I just wanna skip the decay. I'm not gonna be using that. I'm gonna be using the second part over here. And the attack, we're gonna dial that back up a bit. And we are getting there. Uh, coming over here, I'm gonna bring the drive up maybe a bit more. I adjusted the filter setting real quick and let's just screw around a little bit with these last couple of things uh, because they'll be quite responsive after we've set everything up. These little adjustments can really go a long way later. No, they're very fun sounds to make at the end after you, you've made a couple more adjustments and really honed it in you should get something pretty similar to this so at the end you can see the release come up which is what adds that like rah, at the end we can also tell that i've set the the control b here at a different spot which is what gives it the resonance at the particular midi note that i wrote so that's relative to where you sort of write your notes. And that is how you make this kind of a sound. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.